And we are on the next part of Adam alayhi salatu salam. And uh, Adam alayhi salatu salam, some things that we mentioned last week was about his khalq and about uh, how Allah azza wa jal created him. And the fact that Allah azza wa jal, he, he took time to create him as well in front of the angels. And that he took, he done in stage by stage. And that all, all that was happening in front of the angels and it was happening in front of Iblis. And Iblis was getting jealous because Iblis was was wanting a prestigious status uh, in the sight of Allah Azza wa Jal. Now, when Allah Azza wa Jal had created Adam alayhi salam, and then he had blown into him the ruh or the, the life itself, then Adam alayhi salam came alive and Allah Azza wa Jal then had the angels ask him about, about this uh, creation and what would be the purpose of this creation when already he's being uh, praised and so on. Then Allah Azza wa Jal revealed, then he inspired into Adam alayhi salam the names. Now about these names that Adam alayhi salam gave, these names, we did some tafsir uh, last week. And one of the things I wanted to say with the lessons that we, we're learning from this is that Allah Azza wa Jal, he <coughs> is our teacher. He's our teacher. And he has said in the first part of the Quran, when the Quran came down, Iqra' bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq, khalaq al-insana min alaq, Iqra' wa rabbika al-akram, alladhi allama bil qalam, the one who is teaching by the pen. So our ultimate teacher is Allah, Allah Azza wa Jal. And we have to also understand that <clears throat> from this asma, they say that is the lughat, is the different languages. So they say that uh, Adam alayhi salam, he knew all the languages that would be created until the day of judgment. So he had that within himself to know the different and how to say something in a different language as well. Allahu alam, Allah, we don't have an authentic narration to say that, but these are from some of the tafsirs uh, that are there. And so what we learn from this is that the ability to have, you know, whatever neurotransmitters we've got inside our, inside our minds, uh, our father, forefather Adam had all of, the, all of that in his mind. And the thing is that the human is so unique, so unique that the brain itself, you know, we only use uh, a very small percentage of our brain. Uh, we only use a very small percentage. Now the rest of the brain, what is it doing and how does it function and how are we able to sort of do something? I just want to share something with you that there are certain people in the world who are called savants. Now savants are people who whom Allah Azza wa Jal, he opens certain transmitters, he makes certain connections inside the brain because of either the way they were born or the, when they have an actual accident. If they have an accident, so maybe you know, they've, they've hit their head somewhere or they've, they've, had, you know, they've fallen somewhere and it's particularly with the brain. So what this does is different savants have different things. What happens, all of a sudden this individual becomes very knowledgeable in one area of, you know, of, of, of a particular science. So you can search this, savants, S-A-V-A-N-T-S, savants. And you can find on the internet many different savants and there's, there's clips of them, there's even documentaries on them. You know, one, for example, a bang to the head suddenly might make somebody, you know, so proficient in learning so many languages. This is one of the things that, you know, there's one in Germany at the moment right now, I think he can learn a language, I think in a matter of, matter of days, I think in a week he can learn an entire language. And they put him to the test as well. And they, scientists can't work out how is it that this person, you know, is able to do this. Uh, there's another one who actually knows 20 languages. 20 languages and he's got these thrills just for learning new words and he can tell you bread in so many different ways so many different, and these are not languages of one particular area of the world they're scattered from you know from russia to you know um, uh, parts of america right down to sort of parts of africa and so on this is one thing sometimes because of the uh, damage to the to or not the da there's a damage but then there's also you know something that happens in the brain they can become brilliant mathematicians brilliant in maths i mean there's one savant who can tell you pi Pi, uh, if you know in, in maths, he can tell you to the 42nd thousandth, I think, uh, numeral. And all off by heart. 
This is, and this is all, and the way he sees it is a landscape. He doesn't see numbers like me and you. He sees a landscape and he sees beautiful, he sees a number one in a particular shape, number two in a particular shape, number three. You give him any sum, he'll work it out on the spot for you. Uh, and they don't, again, they don't know how, how, how they do this. There's another one that um, he's got this, he, he, like you show him, you give him clay, he always has to have clay. And this is from a very small age. And he'll mold for you any animal that you know he sees any human any animal that he sees he can mold it another one is proficient in sort of language another one might be proficient in music you know where they will just play and play and play any you know they'll they'll, they'll cut they'll get new uh, musical things in their heads and they'll just play the piano or whatever it is they'll carry on playing it now sometimes savants have one area and sometimes savants can have up to 15 different areas of of um, you know uh, a brilliance in, in their intelligence and knowledge. But they have deficiencies as well. The deficiencies might be that they might be antisocial, they might not be able to get on with, with, with people, they might not be able to sort of brush their teeth properly or wear their clothes properly. So these are certain deficiencies that they, that they have. Now what needs to be said here is that just because of a certain thing inside what's happened in the brain, we don't know what exactly has happened but Allah Azza wa Jal, the same man who's got the same brain, who never knew any of this in his whole life, suddenly he has a you know, bang to his head and is able to remember, you know, is able to create or know all of this information out of nowhere. So what, what I believe, and I think um, scientists are also uh, alluding, is that every human being has all of this in their head. When Adam alayhi salam was created, what Allah Azza wa Jal had done is that he had just connected those transmitters, neurotransmitters or those cells or whatever it is in his mind and he was able to instantly just know all this information because the way Allah has created the brain is that it holds all this information already. All we're doing is in life is uh, we're, we're using a very small part of the brain somewhere and few transmitters and few neurotransmitters are linking with one another and we don't know which one's really and how it's all being linked together. And we're able to then learn new information by, by those few transmitters that are operating inside our brains. But if Allah Azza wa Jal right now was to make us just learn a new language just like that, um, He can make us, make us do it. Um, and the, the, the thing is with Adam Alayhi Salaam knowing all this information, another thing we learn, and one of my teachers said this is, you know in your life, everything that we hear, Everything we see, everything we hear, everything we perceive, it has all been recorded inside the brain. Now you might forget something, but you ha haven't actually forgotten it. No one actually ever forgets anything. But you're made to forget or you're made to lose that memory for a partial amount of time. They say that when we get to the Day of Judgment, then our our eyesight will be very sharp in the sense that we will be able to remember everything that, is, that has happened in our lives. Everything that has happened in our lives. And one of the, the, the things is that the brain holds all the information. Now, sometimes, you know, when you, when you knew something and then you forgot something and then after that, you, you're trying to remember it again. And then you do remember it. Occasionally, you remember things that you never remembered. Sometimes certain things trigger off certain you know memories so you might smell a particular smell that you had smelled when you were like six years old but yeah and you had certain things that were associated to it as soon as you get that same smell at the age of 30 you'll straight away remember all those images that are that are linked to that now the brain is fascinating and how Allah has created it and um, the other thing the interesting thing is that we can, so we never forget anything Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said particularly with the Quran he said that, ne, don't say that, you know, if you forget a verse of the Qur'an, this is in Hadith of Bukhari and so on, other books. When you forget a verse of the Qur'an, don't say, Nasi tu ayata kada wa kada. Don't say that I've forgotten this particular verse. But say, Unsi tuha. Say that I've been made to forget that. Because Nasit can also mean, in Arabic, Nasit can mean, mean that taraktu, means that I've left it. You know, I've, I've left this with Nasit not only means forgetting it, but means that you've left it. So it means leaving it out of your mind. So it's not, it's, it's not a good thing to say that I've left the Quran out of my heart or out of my mind. It's better to say that I've been made to do so or been made to forget. So anyway, Adam al had this brilliant mind. Now this brilliant mind itself was blowing um, Iblis because Iblis never had that mind. Now jinns, uh, one of the things that they have, because Iblis was a jinn, 
is that they have sur'a, sur'atul jasad, or they have a very sort of fast body, and they are able to travel really fast. Though the human being competes with him with his suratul dhahan, which is his the, the fastness of his intelligence. So he's 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 really intelligent compared to the jinns, but the jinn is really fast in terms of you know his body and his strength as well. The jinns have a great amount of strength that Allah has given them, whereas the humans don't compare with that. Uh, but the brilliance of the human mind supersedes the jinns. It supersedes. That's why one of the things we have in the Quran is Inna kaida shaytani kana da'ifa. The plots of the shaytan is weak. Allah has said that to us. Because if you as a human being want to overcome the shaytan, you've got a super, super mind that can do that. And it just takes your willpower to say that, you know, I'm not going to be taken over by the shaitan and you can do it. Any human being can do it. So Allah hasn't created the, the, the power of good um, and the power of evil equal. Just like, you know, like the Bible might want us to believe. Allah has created good much stronger than the evil that resides wherever it is in the world. Whether it's from the jinns or it's, it's from others. And the other thing that we uh, understand is that when it comes to um, Iblis and his jealousy that he had, the jealousy he had was from a number of things and they were brewing and they were building. And he wasn't doing anything to try and suppress his jealousy. So Allah Azza wa Jal, um, he's, he's given us, this, us ourselves, the humans or the jinns, the power to overcome our own jealousy. His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam talked about a, a proper jealousy that you can have, a true one. Like he said that none of you can really become jealous except uh, in, in a person who has the Qur'an inside him and he, uh, a man who has the Qur'an inside him and he's reading it by, by night and by day. Or a man who's been given a lot of money and he's given a lot of charity by night and by day. That's the only two people you can be jealous of, meaning that you can be envious in a good way. Now one in Arabic you have hasad which is jealousy and you, you have uh, envy where you have ghibta, ghibta. Now ghibta is when you envy someone in a nice way. So it means that you envy like you say that that person, you know, you say that that person has got that thing. I wish that I can also get the same thing like him. That's envy in a nice way. Where jealousy or hasad, the word is hasad in Arabic and jealousy we use in English. The one that is haram is when you see a person who's got a gift and you look at them and you say to yourself, you know what, I want to have that in me as well. But at the expense of that person losing his or her quality. So it means that you want it, this is a very different thing. In the first one, you want it, but you want that gift in the other person to remain as well. So if they've got a lot of money, you want them to have their money and whatever, you know, to have salam and peace with all their money. But at the same time, you want to become a rich person. If it's beauty, you want to remain beautiful and you want the other person to also have, you know, ha have, you want to become beautiful and you want the other person to have their beauty intact. But if it was hasad, what it would mean is that you get jealous and you think, you know, that wealth should be mine. That beauty should be mine. That person doesn't deserve that wealth. That person doesn't deserve that beauty. Now, I deserve that. I should have had that. I should have had that intelligence. Now, this is haram where you feel in a negative way and you want the zawalu ni'ma or you want the other person to lose their good quality that Allah has given them. That is the hasad that Allah Azza wa has prohibited us from. Now, when you look back into uh, Iblis and uh, Adam alayhi salam, you know, his, his, alayhi his story, you find that Iblis's jealousy was of the second type where he had, uh, he, he wanted Adam alayhi salam, to lose his position and for Iblis to gain that position. Had he had en an envious you know, thing where he would have looked at Adam and thought, wow, you know, this individual, Allah has given him a great you know, position and he's taught him all these, all these words and language and all that. You know, I wish I too could learn all of that, but I wish the best for Adam and I wish the best he could have that and continue with that. If he had that, then there would have been no, nothing wrong with it. But of course, he didn't have that. So these are, these are some of the, the great lessons that we learn from this. 
The other thing is that when, uh, when Allah Azza wa Jal now has got Adam Alayhi Salaam now created and he's talking and he's moving and he's got now um, the, the angels there and they're questioning and they've been overpowered. Because wow, they're all, they're all you know, overpowered. They said, they've already said, Subhanak, you know, we've, we, we say that, you know, you, oh Allah Azza wa Jal, you, you're the one who is free from every, um, everything that's imperfect, everything that is negative. La ilma lana, we have no knowledge except that what we, you have taught us. Now, we see humbleness come straight away in front of the master himself. And what we've got to understand is the angels are the closest to Allah Azza wa Jal. Now, yes, human beings can, can get closer to Allah, but we've got to really work for it. Anbiya alayhi salam, the prophets are closer to Allah than the angels. That's our belief. The Anbiya and the Prophets are closer to Allah than the angels. Because Anbiya alayhi salatu salam, they have a heavy body as well as they have a good ruh and a, and a soul. And they're able to get, uh, you know, they, they, they've got, they've got like desires like human beings have. They've never sinned. They will not, you know, they, they've never sinned in their life. They're not of the sinful nature. However, they do have temptation inside them, whereas the angels don't have any temptation inside them. And for that reason, um, Anbiya alayhi salatu salam are much higher than the angels. However, what we understand is that the humbleness the, the angels displayed in front of Allah, we learn from that, that the angels themselves being so close to Allah, one of their sifat and one of the qualities was being humble. And being humble is something that Allah likes and you are close to God for showing that humbleness to, to in front of Allah. Um, Imam Shafi rahimahullah, he said, and this is a beautiful statement of his, he said, Kullama zdattu ilman is to jahla. He said, every time I gained some knowledge, I gained ignorance with it. Or I, I gained, I became more ignorant. Every time I increased myself in knowledge, I so much so increased myself in ignorance. Now, what did he mean by that? What he meant by that was that knowledge, <clears throat> knowledge itself, you can gain today. You can say, wow, I read this book. But Imam Shafi was trying to say that yesterday you never even knew that knowledge. So now today you found out how much of an ignorant person you, you were yesterday. And today you also find out that there are so many other things that you don't know. So when you read another book tomorrow or somebody teaches you something new tomorrow, you, you, become more, you should become more humble and say that, you know what, I was so backward that just a moment ago I didn't even know this. And every time you learn something, you think, subhanAllah, I didn't even know that. Now that follows the th same thing with the angels. They said straight away, subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma allamtana. They said, you know, uh, you are so perfect, O oh Allah, that we have no knowledge except for that which you have taught us. And it teaches us as Muslims and Mu'mins to be humble in front of Allah because Allah Azza wa Jal has got all knowledge and we don't have you know, knowledge. And anyone in this dunya that teaches us something, we should be humble in front of them. That's why Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu said in one of his statements that anyone who teaches me even a letter, I become his slave. If he wants to, he can buy me. If he wants to, he can sell me. Meaning that I'm so in, you know, I'm so indebted to the person who teaches me something because knowledge is something that is not, not cheap and, you, and knowledge is something that uh, you know, comes to us through, through sacrifice and we all have a duty that we owe to the one who has taught us something.